السلام علیکم لیجسلیشن ان فیشن لا پارٹ ٹو دس از ان کنٹینیوشن ٹو دا ون دیٹ وی ہیو آلریڈی ڈسکسڈ ان پارٹ ون وٹ آئی ہیو ڈسکسڈ ود یو آل واز انٹروڈکشن ٹو لیجسلیشن اینڈ ہسٹری آف فیشن لا ٹوڈے وی ول فردر ڈسکس دا لیگل فریم ورک آف فیشن لا ان دا ماڈرن ورلڈ With modernization and advancement in technology and industrialization, fashion law has taken a new phase. Now fashion law is a legal field having issues that arise throughout the life of an article of clothing or fashion accessory. Fundamental issues in fashion law include intellectual property, business and finance with subcategories ranging from employment and labor law to real estate. international trade and government regulation including questions of safety and sustainability dress codes and religious apparels consumer culture privacy and wearable tech and civil rights textile production modeling media cosmetics and perfume industries intellectual property protection This has been a substantial legal concern in fashion since the emergence of fashion brand in the 19th century. The key issues that include in this area are copyright protection such as design patents, trademarks, utility patents such as advancement in technology and international standards. Now what are copyright protections? Copyright is the exclusive right given to the creator of a creative work to reproduce the work usually for a limited time. The creative work may be in literary, artistic or design sense. Copyright is intended to protect the original expression of an idea in the form of creative work but not the idea itself. In apparel and textile, most commonly design and prints come under copyright protections. trademark A trademark is a typical intellectual property consisting of a recognizable sign, a symbol, a design or an expression which identifies a product or a service of a particular source from others like uh, the label, the voucher, the logo that you see on different products uh, this is all a trademark then what are patents a utility patent or a patent is a form of intellectual property that gives its owner the legal right to exclude others from making the same object and that this is also for a limited period of time a prominent related issue has been cultural appropriation such as the use of native american or religious designs by commercial fashion brands like some um, some uh, cultures they dislike of production of their um, products and their designs they ask for a legal protection likewise we face this uh, issue in our religious uh, area because uh, you have multiple times seen that um, quranic ayats or the name of allah has been uh, uh, printed on some brands clothes or uh, shoes and uh, we as muslims uh, do convey our discomfort and uh, our retaliation to this kind of uh, thing although these uh, this keep on coming time and again but under this law we are we have the right to protect this kind of uh, activity or th- protect our um, uh, our quranic ayat or uh, anything that is precious to us from this kind of uh, indecent activities financial and corporate structure fashion law encompasses issues relevant to starting and funding a business such as privacy equity investment factoring public offering by fashion brands 
Private equity, uh, private equity refers to an investment fund generally organized as limited partnership. Factoring uh, is a financial transaction or uh, any type of account receivable, receivable in, the in the form of invoice to a third party. It may be called, um, it may be, um, uh, called a factor or a discount also. Manufacturing Legal issues in the production of clothing and accessories include work safety and other labor practices, garment district zoning, and source indictions. Occupational safety and health, as commonly referred to health and safety, occupational health and safety or occupational safety is a multidisciplinary disciplinary field with the safety, health and welfare of people at work. The goal of an occupational safety and health program is to foster a safe and a healthy environment which may protect workers, co-workers, family members, employers, customers and many others who might, who might be affected by the workplace environment. Then we have source indications. It is a geographical indication. It is a sign used on the product that have a specific geographical origin and possess a quality or a reputation that are due to that origin. That means that uh, we have to give the origin of that product, uh, the, orig the geographical origin of that product. This is also, this also comes legal law. Marketing. Legal issues addressed in connection with marketing include label requirements, licensing and deceptive advertising. Now we will are going to discuss uh, what are label requirements. Garment labeling isn't new in clothing production, but it is something that is considered very important. It is important to ensure that you adhere to a local regulation and law such as those handed down by the Federal, Federal Trade Commission. Not only does a label establish your clothing brand or identity, but it also gives instructions that help the customers best care for the garment after they purchase it. Clothing label is so important in fact that consumers protection agencies in the United States, Canada and abroad have stringent care labeling code requirements. In addition, independent organizations such as International Standard and International Organization for Standardization, which we very lovingly call ISO, have their own labeling requirement that companies must follow if they wish to receive certification. While the garment label requirements of different countries are similar in that that these regulations are all in place for consumers protection purposes. There are some, imp some important differences between these requirements that you will need to know. If you want to sell clothing or a household textile internationally, a simple tag on the inside center area of the garment which uh, might indicate the, uh, the country of the uh, pr country in which the product is made mm. simply won't cut it but will help you to nav navigate the complex legal framework surrounding the garment's care information. That means that uh, only the name of the country uh, from in which the garment is made is not important. In fact, you need to tell more about the product, how it is to be washed, at what temperature it is to be washed, uh, what uh, detergents can be used on it, what is the size of the garment, what is the percentage of the fiber used in it, like um, when we talk about uh, cotton polyester blend, how much polyester, how much cotton, uh, that must also be indicated. And as in Wool Labeling Act, uh, according to the Wool Labeling Act, if uh, the wool used in the product is um, a virgin wool or if it's reused or recycled, whatever, according to that labeling act, that should be mentioned on the product. Now, deceptive advertising. Deceptive advertising is false advertising. 
it is used uh, it, it is the use of false misleading or unproven information to advertise products to consumers consumers ability to distinguish false advertisement is affected by their emotions people with positive emotions are more sensitive to uh, false advertisements the advertis advertising frequently does not disclose its source so this is also a legal concern retail legal issues connected with retail envi environment include consumer data privacy security and credit card information discrimination based on racial racial profiling and real estate leasing and ownership now as a very importantly a very important legal framework uh, is the uh, consumer data privacy and the security of the credit card information uh, which we are very familiar as we are very familiar with the e-commerce industry is flourishing due to various reasons of which nowadays the most recent one is the covid-19 so more and more people are buying through online um, sites so this uh, this act or this law gives security to those using credit card uh, for this purpose then discrimination based on racial profiling it is the act of suspecting or targeting a person or a certain race on the basis of observed or unassumed characteristics or behavior um it may be due to um their belonging to a religious or an ethnic group and uh, this target um in nowadays we can see again i would um, state this is more towards muslims it is uh, um, they are very commonly targeted due to their uh, religion back religious backgrounds so under this law we can again uh, again fight for our um, fight for our right ethics sustainability and economic development concerns pertaining to fashion ethics sustainability and economic development have a substantial impact on the industry affecting both the legal framework and self regulation initiatives important issues included uh, in this area are organic certification greenwashing supply chain monitoring and certification standards such as the hig index and uh, sa8000 certifications the regulation of digitally altered images fair trade fashion the impact of philanthropic initiatives and clothing donation programs such as the buy one give one business model now in the organic certification area uh, this comes uh, under the production uh, of the crop basically and uh, the the silent features of uh, this standardization is that land must have no uh, have no prohibited substances applied to it for at least 3 years before the harvest of an organic crop then the soil and the fertility crop and nutrients will be managed through tillage and cultivation practices the crops the pests uh, the crop pests the weeds and the disease will be controlled primarily through managed practices including physical mechanical and biological controls uh, operations must use uh, organic seeds the use of genetic engineering ionization radiation and sewage plug is prohibited now these are some uh, some main features which cover the organic certification then uh, what is greenwashing actually greenwashing is a process of a false imp impression pr of providing misleading information about how a product or a company is more environmentally friendly or it's more environmentally sound greenwashing is considered as a disease it is uh, is a, it is considered as a deceptive uh, uh practice or it is used to deceive cons consumers into believing that the company's products are environmentally friendly uh the supply chain monitoring and the standardization certification we will discuss in detail uh in the in the uh, in coming up slides uh the 
regulation of digital altered image now in this era of uh, social media age it is a standard practice for photographers and digital media production specialists to correct perceived flaws in the appearance of models using softwares to uh, tools like photoshops model skin tones are highlighted wrinkles and blemishes are removed to make them look younger and their body size and shapes are altered to reflect uh, prevailing norms so this practice is also um, this practice also comes under the legal framework because due to the due to this um, image created of uh, a zero size body or you can say um, a beautiful color tone people are m moving towards practices uh, which are not mm, safe for them like uh, they go on diets like uh, and then they go on diets no diet uh, uh, plans like where they are not eating anything and they suffer from anorexia and bulimia uh, which are um, psychological um, problems related to eating disorders and uh, then they get multiple types of injections in their uh, skins like they go for botox or um, uh, implants or they go for um, treatments of their skin multiple uh, things done in this area so this is a important area in the fashion world international trade in addition to international implementations of implications of issues noted above fashion law also addresses other matters connected to international business transactions including the gray market goods import and export quotas transfer pricing taxations and custom duties modeling law the legal status of models have become prominent in fashion law as exemplified by the regulations of model weight in place such as Madrid, Milan and Israel. New York's enactments of giving underage model protection under the state chi state's child labor law, antitrust enforcement in relation to models pay rates and efforts to crop fashion related human trafficking. These laws are also very important in, in the modeling world. Now. In order to ensure the areas of fashion laws are implemented, some legal framework is derived in the form of quality control, monitoring and certification standard policies and regulations. Quality standards set out the priority areas for quality improvement in health and social care. These standards either set a statement to improve the quality or information on how to measure the progress. A product is said to be of a quality if it is free from any manufacturing defects, deficiencies or significant variations. In order to do so, certain specific standard needs to be set so that uniformity is achieved in the entire set of products being manufactured. A quality standard is a detail of requirement specifications, the various guidelines and characteristics to be able to meet its quality by the product in order to meet the purpose of the product process or the service in case a company fails to meet this quality standard it may end up losing the trust of the customer its market share and it can lose its long built brand equity by investing in quality one can cut down on huge losses and win a satisfied satisfied customer base during a product inspection, one of the main tasks is looking for defects on samples, categorizing them as critical, major and reporting them. The maximum number of defects that, allow, that is allowed is based on the AQL. AQL stands for the acceptance quality limit and is defined as the quality level that is the worst tolerable. It represents the maximum number of defects units beyond which a batch is rejected. Importers usually set different AQLs for critical, major and minor defects. 
Most Asian exporters are familiar with this type of setting, which has to be set by the customer or by the authority defined by the customer prior to inspection. Once a list of defects is agreed, one should decide on each one's category. Critical defects might harm a user or do not respect the importing country's regulations. Major defects are usually not accepted by end customers so they would not buy the product. And minor defects are the slight issues that usually don't prevent the sale of the product. The need for an objective measurement of quality in certain product categories, there will be defective products in vir virtually every production batch. So it is often true even after the manufacturer has tracked each uh, individual product and has repaired the defective ones. Visual uh, since visual inspection is not 100% reliable, therefore in many supplier and buyer relationships, particularly when the application does not result in life or death outcomes, the supplier is not expected to, be to deliver defect-free goods. The buyer need to control the quality of the purchase goods since he does not want too many defects. But uh, what does too many means? This is where the AQL comes into play. Quality control or QC is a procedure or set of procedures intended to ensure that a manufactured product or performed service adheres to a defined set of quality criteria or meet the requirement of the client or the customer. QC is similar to but not identical with quality assurance that is QA. QA is defined as a procedures or set of procedures intended to ensure that a product or the service under development while it is being constructed, it is not fully made, meets the specific requirement. QA is sometimes expressed together with QC as in the single expression of uh, quality assurance and quality control QA and QC. Professional certifications. In order to implement an effective QC program, an enterprise must first decide which specific standards the product or the service must meet. Then the extent of QC actions must be determined. The QC process must be ongoing to ensure that remedial efforts, if required, have produced satisfactory results and to immediately detect reoccurrences or new instances of trouble. So professional certification can be found in almost every industry today. Uh, like uh, in finance, it is the CPA, project management, it is PMI, supply chain management, uh, APICS, information technology, ITIL, business process management, ABPMP, etc. are few to list from a wide range of professions that have voluntary or mandatory certifications. Certification has found its way into almost every industry for a reason. It helps advance the profession. Certification helps employees, employers evaluate potential new hires, analyze job performances, evaluate employees, select contractors, market services and motivate employees to enhance their skills and knowledge. Certificate holders also benefit from this. Uh, certification gives recognition of competency, shows commitment to the profession and helps with job advancements. There has been ex an explosive growth in professional certifications. The most common professional certifications that are used in clothing and textile are going, we are going to discuss them one by one. Number um, on in this slide you can see the Asthma and Allergy Foundation of America. It is the AAFA. Physicians recommend avoidance of household allergens for those with allergies and asthma. Choosing asthma and allergy friendly certified products are part of an overall overall allergen reduction plan uh, in the home. Quality and safety testing indicates that the product will withstand the care code outlined by the Asthma and Energy Foundation of, the, of America. 
The product has been scientifically tested by allergy standard limits. This is usually used in the bedding products certificate uh, bed and bedding products certified with asthma and allergy friendly tells you that the outer fabric acts as an effective allergen barrier. It has been manufactured from material that do not contain chemicals and allergens known to affect asthma and allergies. If under normal condition of use and if specific care guidelines are product followed, this product will not accumulate high levels of household allergens. Then we have the SA8000. It is an international certification standard that encourages organizations to develop, maintain and apply social acceptable practices in the workplace. It was created in, 1889, in 1989 by Social Accountability International, SAI, an affiliate of the Council of Economic Priorities. It can be applied to any company of any size anywhere in the world. SA8000 certification issues include forced child labor, forced and, chi forced and child labor, occupational health and safety, freedom of association and collective bargaining, discrimination, disciplinary practices, working hours, compensation, management systems and workplace standards. SA8000 as well as SA8000 also embraces existing international agreements including convention from the International Labour Organization, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and the United, Nation, uh, United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child. Adopting SA8000 means an organization must consider the social impact of their operations in addition to the condition under which they employ the employees, the partners, the suppliers operate. Certifying your organization against SA8000 with an SGS audit will help an organization develop and improve social accountability uh, throughout their operations. It implements the most globally accepted workplace standards and demonstrations, demonstrates social accountability when bidding for contracts and expanding the organization. So it is very important if we have to um, earn the quota of the world um, because they consider workplace standards, child labors as important clues if your organization is not practicing these um, standards, they're not going to give you business, they're not going to buy from you. OIK text standard 100. It is an independent testing and certification system for textile products from a stage uh, from all stages of production that is fiber, yarn, fabric, ready to use end products including accessories. The label confidence in textile of the product related Oikotex standard 100 uh, it means the textile is the tested for harmful substances and the certification is provided to it. It's supplemented by the certification of environmental friendly production facilities according to Oikotex standard 1000 and by the product label Oikotex standard 100 plus for product tested for harmful substances from environmentally friendly production. It was developed in 1992. Oikotex standard 100 is an independent testing and certification system for textile raw materials, intermediate and end products at all stages of production. Example uh, of eligible item for certification are raw and dyed finished yarns, raw and dyed finished fabrics, nets, ready-made articles, all types of clothing, domestic, household uh, textiles, bed linen, terry cloth items, textile toys, and anything and everything that comes under this um, under textile brand name or textile name. The criteria testing for hum harmful substances include illegal substances, legally regulated substances, known harmful but not legally regulated chemicals, parameters for health care. In their entirety, the requirement clearly exceeds existing national legislation. 
laboratory test uh, tests and product classes oikotex testing for harmful substances always focus on the actual use of the textile the more intensive the skin contact of a product the stricter the human ecological requirement to be met according to this there are four product classes product 1 class textile item for babies and toddlers up to 3 years like the clothing their toys their bed linens their daily cloth items etc product 2 class are textiles used to uh, close to the skin that are the underwears the bed linens the t-shirts etc product 3 classes include textiles used away from the skin that are the jackets the coats the belts the shoes the bags etc then product class 4 are the furnishing materials that is uh, curtains table cloths upholstery material etc certification the requirement for a certification of textile product according to oikotex 1000 100 is that all components of an item have to comply with the criteria without any exception which means in addition to the outer material also the sewing thread the lining the print all as well as the non textile accessories such as the buttons the zip fasteners the rivets all are certified under the certification international organization for standardization that is iso it is one of the most important that is very widely used in almost all of the countries uh, of the world ISO was founded in 1947 it is a worldwide federation of national standard bodies from some 100 countries with one standard body representing each member country ISO international standards are the most com- widely accepted set of quality standards adopted by majority of the firms across the countries the national uh, the american national standard institute uh, a n SI for example represents the United States member organization collaborate in the development and promotion of international standards among the standards of ISO fosters is open uh, system interconnection that is OSI which is a universal reference model for communication protocols according to ISO ISO is not an abbreviation it is derived from the greek isos meaning equal which is the root of the prefix iso that occurs in the host of the terms such as isometric which means the equal measure or dimension or isonomy which means equal law or of of people before the law the name iso is used around the world to denote the organization the thus avoiding the assortment of the abbreviations that could result from the translation of the international organization for standardization into different languages of the members whenever the country uh, whatever whatever the country the short form of organization name is always iso then we have another one that is the fair labor association since 1999 FLA has helped improve the lives of millions of workers around the world. As a collaborative effort of socially responsible companies, colleges and universities and civil society organizations, FLA creates lasting solutions to abusive labor practices by offering tools and resources to companies, delivering training to factory workers and management, conducting due diligence to Uh, diligence through independent assessments and advocating for greater accountability and transparency from companies, manufacturers, factories, and other involved in the global supply chain. So this is also a very worldwide responsible accredited production rack. It is a non-profit dedicated non-profit organization dedicated to promoting safe, lawful, humane and ethical manufacturing around the world through certification and education. The RAP certification program mainly focuses on the apparel, footwear, 
and soon product sectors the rap principles are based on generally accepted international workplace standards local laws workplace regulations which encompasses human resource management health and safety environmental practices and legal compliance including import and export customs compliance and security standards the areas covered by this certification are compliance with law and workplace regulation prohibition of forced labor prohibition of child labor prohibition of harassment or abuse compensation and benefits hours of work prohibition of discrimination health and safety freedom of association and collective bargaining environment customs compliances security the pro- program objective is to independently monitor and certify compliance with these socially responsible global standards for manufacturing and ensuring that ensuring that manufactured products are produced under lawful human and ethical conditions sustainable measures for sustainable future we have to make uh the world sustainable for our future generations so when we think of the world's most polluting industry we tend to focus on culprits like oil and gas in united states the environmental protection agencies takes an active role in regulating industries that the government deems dangerous to the environment including the agriculture oil and gas transportation electric utilities and construction But why not the 1.4 trillion dollar global fashion sector which is responsible for an estimated 8% of global greenhouse gas emissions No doubt part of the reason is that the scale of the industry environmental footprint is relatively a new problem When the EPA was established in 1970 the global fashion industry was far smaller than it is today fast fashion didn't yet exist as but as brands focused on making clothes as inexpensively as possible effective transforming clothes into disposable objects the sectors ballooned in the industry so it is not that everything is taking in uh, taking uh, in action into one place um, cotton is grown in, in some manner in some another area then it is uh, say then it is shipped to another country for turning it into a textile material um either net or the woven and then it is shipped into another country to get it stitched wherever they find um, the labor at a cheaper cost which is their work over there and finally it is distributed throughout the world hmm. In 2000 it was estimated that 5 billion units of apparel were manufactured worldwide. By 2015 that has doubled to 100 billion. There are new business models like clothing rentals and online second hand markets that aim to cut down the total number of clothes manufactured every year. These brands there are brands that have been producing environmental conscious conscious goods for years like Elaine Fisher and Patagonia and some startups have attempted to regulate themselves like Everlane decision to replace all new plastic in its supply chain with recycled plastic and Allbirds decision to impose a carbon tax on itself the company is actually imposing some serious steps are required in this area so where we can start is that by gathering data for decades the fashion industry's impact on the environment wasn't well understood environmental non-profits and other organizations are now beginning to study the problem and the data they have uncovered is staggering the allen mac arthur foundation estimated that the textile manufacturing consumes Uh, 98 million tons of non-renewable resources from oil 
that goes into synthetic fibers to fertilizers to grow cotton and 93 billion cubic meters of water annually. And the International, international Energy a, uh, Agency estimates that the textile industry also generates 1.2 billion of greenhouse gas emissions in 2016, which is more than all the international flights and maritime shipping trips combined. This is just scratching the surface of the problem. Government agencies could go a long way quantifying this impact on the planet. In the end, uh, in the end, governments have the incentives to do this because it will fall on nations to clean up the mess uh, that companies create from paying for recovering tax from natural disasters caused by climatical change to cleaning up the toxic chemicals and waterways from the textile dyes and all those um, uh, textile chemicals used in the finishing processes. Writing legislation. All of this research could help govern governments write laws about how fashion companies should conduct business. In case of France, for instance, uh, burning of uh, France has uh, put a ban on burning of goods. So there are plenty of other policies that could that could be put in place. Fashion brands are notorious for wrapping their products in a single-use clear plastic as they work their way through the supply chain. The government should force brands to use recycled plastic for this packaging or find a way to use reusable bags. Another policy could forbid brands from using virgin plastics. Now that high quality recycling polyester is available, this would increase the price of recycled plastics, which would compel plastic recyclers to get their hands on as many discarded plastic bottles as possible. Creating consequences. It is going to take a lot of money to build infrastructure to deal with fashion waste. For instance, the technology for recycling fabric into new fabric, uh, fabrics into new fabric is uh, there, but still aluminium recycling or plastic recycling system haven't yet developed. The government could tax companies that don't comply with regulations, then use these taxes to fund the creation of apparel and footwear recycling. And with these systems in place, government could force companies to create products that are recyclable. Brands like Levi's are already beginning to think about how to create recyclable clothes, like creating fleece tucker jackets under the synthetic fleece is, uh, where the synthetic fleece is recycled in one system and the denim can be separated by recycling in another. This would usher in a new era of circulatory uh, in fashion where we could would a need to produce new cotton, new wool, synthetic fibers and other raw material but use material that already exist. This would dramatically reduce carbon emissions since the majority of emissions are generated early in the supply chain from the resourcing of raw material. France is well known for fashion capital and fashion sector in the second most profitable sector in the nations after aeronautics and its initial efforts to address fashion pollution problem within the government are laudable. The international scale of the problem still persists, persists government around the world need to get on board to. Concerned citizens should lobby leaders to devote more resources to the problem. It is easy to think fashion as frivolous but the truth is that it is an industry that is destroying the earth. If you are going to have a livable planet to pass to our children, we need to overhaul the industry. Government regulations are a crucial part in that effort. Now food for thought. One thing I believe is that uh, nothing is impossible first of all and then we can always cut down our expenses by using what we have multiple times like we can wear one dress to as many parties as we want to, as many places as we want to. Uh, nobody is going to look down on us um, in this regard. Then we must buy uh, products when we need them actually, not on the basis of our desires or our wants. 
and all this is because we could avoid more and more landfills of the world so the food for thought over here is like one key in one key ingredient that doesn't show up on your shirt's label is water amazingly it takes up 2700 liters to produce the cotton needed to make a single t-shirt this is unseen or virtual water we consume every day so while it is important to fix leaky taps by efficient washing machine the water we use at home is part of our total water footprint only part of our total water footprint your smartphone might not make you think of water but from mining essential minerals to washing microchips that little gadget has a substantial global water footprint and it is so convenient for us to buy each year a new brand of uh, mobile phone just for our own liking because uh, the previous one was also not giving any problems and as i've multiple times discussed in the class that most of us have not even used all the options or all the apps on our mobile phones before we even discard it the amount of fresh water available to meet the needs of the people in nature is limited but the demands grow year grow year by year we have to get smarter about how we use water so using water better is a slogan 70% of all the water people use globally is dedicated to agriculture that water is essential for food we eat as well as crops like cotton from farmers in pakistan and india to the ceo in the united states and south africa we need people to use water, water more responsibly in recent years in pakistan the initiatives has worked with 75000 farmers uh, who as a result have reduced their water waste by 39% and increased their income by 11%. They also used 47% less pesticides and 39% less chemical fertilizers. That is good for them, good for others communities down the streams, good for the fish, good for the birds, the creatures that depend on rivers, wetlands. and good for people like you who care about where our t-shirts come from and where and how much water our mobile phones are using so how can you make the difference it takes a lot of energy to grow manufacture and transport that cotton t-shirt for but, uh, but did you know that most energy goes into caring for it one load of washing uses 40 gallons of water one load of drying use five times more energy than washing in fact skipping the ironing and drying of your t-shirt saves a third of its carbon footprint whether it is reducing water waste saving energy or being conscious consumers small actions can make big difference think about ways that you could save energy and water i cannot alone change the world but i can cast a stone across the waters to create many ripples this was said by mother teresa and i know that you all can do it thank you god bless you